Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back, and welcome to episode four of Tasmania. Um, in this episode, we're going to have a look at Lake Brady, and uh, from there we go out to a place called Taralee, which was a real surprise, and from there down to the Mountfield National Park, which was one of our favourite destinations so far in Tasmania, although I think it might have been surpassed by the Tasman Peninsula, but we'll get onto that in another episode. I just noticed that um, Nova, spelled backwards, is Avon, which is another brand of caravans. I wonder if Nova know that. We'll cover that up. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed. It's another long episode, unfortunately. Um, and as you know, Lisa and I love our hikes. We really enjoy walks and hikes. And there's a fair bit of that in this episode. So if you're not into hiking or you don't want to see what we're doing while we're tromping through the mountains, then this might not be the one for you. But if you do enjoy your hikes and you're interested in what's available in Tassie, you're going to love this episode. There's plenty of hiking in this one. So sit back and get comfortable and I hope you enjoy episode four of our time here in Tassie. So we are here on sunny Lake Brady. Seven degrees. Feels like three. <laughs> Seven degrees, will with the uh, wind chill factor, it's uh, three degrees. But um, we've got a little bit of shelter out of the breeze at the moment, a bit of reprieve. Apparently tonight it's meant to get a bit blowy again. But um, we're parked here, right on the side of the lake. We've just got the fire going. We might brave it for an hour or so, sit outside, enjoy a glass of wine. But um, this is a gorgeous place. It would be absolutely beautiful if the sun was shining. <laughs> or even if it was 10 degrees warmer, it would be absolutely beautiful. But here we go, Lake Brady. Okay, get this fire going. Get it ramped up a little bit. Yeah, we've got Smokey the bear here, who's in charge of the fire, trying to get it up and running. Technique. <laughs> Should be right. Be as toasty as anything in a couple of minutes. Good job. I'm starting to question the navigational skills of our um, Spirit of Tasmania ferry driver, Captain, sorry, Skipper, because I think he's taken a wrong turn and landed us in Scotland. It feels a bit like we're on the Scottish moors. Seven degrees, drizzly rain, but we've got the fire going and we're not giving up. We're sticking it out. We're going to sit outside here. No, I'm not. <laughs> Until the sun goes down. I've got to cook some sausages yet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can get the pan hot enough. Well, I'm not going to let a little bit of heavy humidity slow me down here. So we're cooking outside. We've got a barbecue going. These are mustard, pork and veal sausages. Sounds interesting. Interesting to see how they go. But, um, had to resort to getting a little bit of uh, moisture protection in here. But it's a beautiful afternoon in Noosa. Not the greatest here, but we'll soldier on. Soldier on regardless. Right, my umbrella? Beautiful, isn't it? Tazzy Barbie. Mm. Veggie barbies. I think they invented the barbecue down here because they've got the weather for it. Have a look at that. We're just on our way down to Oost. 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 O-U-S. E. E. Oh, that's got lots of vowels. And we just came across a um, roadside stall that's looking like the kind of place that murderers would inhabit. If we don't come back. So, we're after honey, native honey. So we'll, um, we just thought we'd pop in and see. <laughs> but now we're getting nervous. Hip camps. Oh, look at that. Oh. Mickey Camp Parking. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. Misery Road. 
This feels just like <laughs> the kind of place. <laughs> property is protected by highly trained, trained chickens. Yeah, this is certainly an unusual place. Okay. <laughs> Just in case someone comes out. We don't come back online in a day or two. Come looking for us, okay? We survived. It's okay. Call off the search parties. What a delightful man. <laughs> Lovely old fella from Germany and uh, makes all his own honey. Has 200 hives spread around the countryside. But um, bakes his own bread. So we bought a loaf of freshly baked sourdough bread as well. Sourdough bread and honey, sounds good. Just need some butter. <laughs> Very cool. Right, this is a little place, well it's not little, it's huge actually, called Tara Lee. Tara Lee was the base for the hydro people when they built the dams and the power stations just around here. And it's amazing, you should see it. But the whole settlement here has been taken over and converted into a resort. And they've got 15 powered sites here. 15 powered all sites. Through. All drive through sites. This is our site here. Have a look at this. How gorgeous is it? All on grass with uh, some lovely trees either side. So you've got a little bit of privacy for your neighbours. And they've got a bar here and a lodge and some really cute houses, which used to be the houses for, I'd say, for the upper management when they were building the, um, the hydro stuff. But the whole place is gorgeous. Cheers. Oh yeah, church, and we were in the bar last night and um, had a nice stout sitting by the fireplace, which was beautiful. But we'll show you a bit more around here, it's just a gorgeous little spot. And the hydro side of it is incredible, absolutely incredible. We'll try and get a bit of that for you as well. These are the cottages that have all been done up, and they obviously rent them out now. Did you find a price for the cottages? Uh, no. no. They're not cheap, let me tell you. They're really well done inside. The whole estate now is actually privately owned, we believe. But yeah, these were um, obviously the upper management cottages <laughs> when they were building the hydro stuff. But they've been lovingly converted now, all painted different colours. There's, there's probably 10 or 12 of them or so. They're really cute. Here's the pink one, looks like a Barbie house. They're all basically the same design. But they've got the porticos at the front are a little bit different on every single house. Beautiful fall trees. Yeah, autumn's creeping in. Trees are all losing their leaves. We've had a couple of, I can edit that bit out. <laughs> Should we just go and have a look at the valley from here for a second? We'll just have a look down here. There's a great view down into the valley where the hydro stations are. This is looking down into the valley, it's really steep. You might just be able to make out the pipes running down the hill here, um, down to where the power stations are, right down the very bottom. And um, there's another lot coming from the other side of the valley. I'll just go over here, across show you the things. other side of the valley, you can see the pipes coming down from the other side there. There's two power stations down the bottom. And um, apparently the water reaches a velocity of 270 kilometers an hour by the time it gets to the turbines at the bottom of the hill which is pretty impressive because when we get to the pipes i'll just show you how big these pipes are they're right. huge <laughs> $40. 40 bucks a night that's powered power and water for two people 40 bucks a night seems expensive but we um but we, it includes, you know, a lot of the places you have to pay for the shower as well. Yeah, yeah, the showers are lovely. Um, yeah, we spent, I think, the last six days off grid, and we're just not getting any sunshine that's been overcast most of the time. So the poor old batteries were struggling, so we needed to get in and uh, and plug in. Here, have a look at these pipes. So the two main feed pipes, as I said, they're about two metres in diameter, these two. Um, yes, so we'd run out of volts and um, we also had to do some washing. It had been about seven days since we'd had a washing machine. So we thought we'd have a couple of nights here, which has turned out to be really lovely. Beautiful. And there's nothing else. Like you'll find it on Wiki and um, it's sort of marked on the maps as a town, but there's no town. It's just really this estate is the only thing that's here. There's no shops or anything like that, so you've got to be fairly self-sufficient. 
is only 38 kilometres away, and they've got an IGA. Yeah, a little tiny town called House. Oos. 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 O U S E. House. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, house yeah. without the H. No, he did say Oos. Oos. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's a lovely IGA just there. A lovely IGA. There's an IGA there in Oos. It's lovely. Yeah, and it's got nearly everything you need. And uh, the proprietor there was wonderful, actually. He was really good. Okay, this is the start of our trek down to the waterfalls. So this is an old tree walk. Wouldn't quite say a tree top walk. <laughs> it's only three meters, three meters off the ground. Yeah, so all you get to see is the trunks. But it's in a uh, bit of a sad state at the moment, so you wouldn't want to get up there. Looks like it'll fall down underneath you. Probably the shortest treetop walk in Australia, I'd say. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of rustic artifacts in this little stretch of the jungle. Oh, this could be an old mine shaft or something. Look at the size of this fungi here. We've been um, seeing some beautiful fungies um, in, up in the forest, especially where all the lichen and um, mosses are growing. So this would be the biggest one of these that we've seen. They're actually quite interesting. They've got two sections. Underneath is quite pale and the top is quite dark, which is quite unique. I'm not sure there'll be a reason for that. Hmm. Okay. We got quite excited the other day when we were doing a bit of a road trip. Um, we actually saw a lyre bird crossing the road, which was quite interesting. Only a fleeting glimpse, but it's the first time I've ever seen a lyre bird, a live lyre bird. Same for Lisa, I think. So uh, we saw a comment on Wiki that somebody had seen traces of a lyre bird on this track. I don't know what traces of a lyre bird would actually mean. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll keep an eye out, see if we can spot some. Or one. The live bird, by the way, if you don't know, is the bird that's on the 10 cent coin. Not the queen's head. She's no live bird. The other side, without the queen's head. Here's our waterfall. Beautiful, huge cave underneath that rock bed there. Down the valley. Ripples over there in that pond. Look at that. Heading down to the top of the waterfall, I'll just send Lisa in. We send Lisa in and just make sure it's safe. And it wasn't a platypus, just a little tiny rapid making ripples. Okay, being very quiet because we've just seen a fire bird. We just walked into the bush and looking. We're in the Mount Field National Park. We uh, are here a little bit earlier than we thought we were going to be. We've been watching the weather and uh, we were going to come and hide out here for Easter, but it looks like it might be pretty rainy and miserable over Easter, so we thought we'd get here first, um, spend a few days here, and then try and find somewhere else to hide <laughs> for Easter. That part of the plan we haven't got to yet. But anyway, this is our first walk here at um, Mount Field National Park, and this one is uh, the walk to Russell Falls but we're actually going to end up doing the three waterfalls, the full circuit, which is about uh, six kilometres, I think. Maybe even two and a half hours. Yeah, six or seven. There's a few climbs to do. Okay. A few hills to go up and down. That's Tasmania. That's Tassie. There's quite a few hills, not to mention trees, here in Tasmania. Rightio, Russell Falls, first port of call. Check out the size of this fern, tree fern. This is a he fern, I think. So they say centimetre a year, so that one has to be two, four, six, six metres tall, I'd say. So it's pushing 600 years old. Amazing. There's some huge ones here. Pretty cool because you probably don't notice it straight away, but there's a tree growing out of it, and then the root comes all the way down here back into the ground. What sort of trees this one, Lise? Hey. The 
the serrated leaves? Sassafras. 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 Well, look at that. This is quite amazing. This is Horseshoe Falls. Second waterfall on this loop. It's really pretty. There are some huge trees here. Look at the size of this old fella. There he goes, he ends up there somewhere. It's amazing. Wow, it's huge. Barren Falls, how beautiful. end of the Three Falls Walk. What have we done so far? Uh, seven and a half K, just under. But um, <laughs> it says in Wiki to do it clockwise. I know, clockwise. We did it clockwise. No, we did it anti-clockwise. <laughs> Don't do it the way we did it. If you do it clockwise, if you do it clockwise, then all the stairs you come down and then you walk up the gentle paths. But if you do it anti-clockwise, like we do, we did, all the stairs you go up and you come down the path. Six of one, dozen and a half of the other. It all depends on whether you like climbing steps or not. Anyway, we get to the top here and it's almost the end. The um, devastation of the fire, I'm not sure when the fire went through here, but you can see the trees are burnt all the way up to the canopy. So they've, they survived. Uh, yeah, they did, yeah. And there's a good amount of uh, regrowth there, so it must have been a few years ago. But um, yeah, it would just be devastating to have fires ripping through these national parks. Absolutely devastating. Oh, yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? They're all burnt. Mm. Oh well, makes for regrowth. If the trees survive, it's not such a bad thing. They actually blend in quite well here, Leaf. Trees. Yeah. <laughs> Got your Wednesday outfit on again. to the high country again. Climb and climb again. So uh, we dropped down out of the high country yesterday. The temperature difference is unbelievable. And Look at this. this 13 morning, degrees. This is about the warmest we've had in weeks. It is sizzling this morning. Absolutely beautiful. The sun's out. It's a lovely day. All those showers are forecast or something. But anyway, our um, hike up in the high country should be lovely. We hope. Keep our fingers crossed. 16k up to Lake Dobson. Rightio, we've done the walkers registration and uh, we're going to do the number eight walk, Tarn Shelf Circuit, five to six hours. Beautiful one minute, deadly the next. <laughs> Hopefully that's not true today. Rightio, let's go. One of the many lakes, I think this is what they call Tarns. I don't know, we're going to have to Google that one. This one's called Platypus. Tarn. But as per normal, no platypuses. One of the many evolutions of layering up, delayering, layering back up again <laughs> as you go from sunny conditions to cloudy conditions. The air temperatures, what was it when we got out of the car? Eight, Eight degrees. Yeah, so it's um, 
eight degrees in the sun it's nice and warm as soon as you're in the shade you certainly feel eight degrees so say in the very early days this is how they used to mark the trail there's um three chops in the tree and a bit of red paint in there there's a few of those that we've spotted along the pathway from obviously many many years ago few muddy water holes to get across. A few water crossings. A few water crossings. Lucky you got a snorkel. Listen to the birds here. Listen. We have fallen in love with this nut grass since we've been over here. It's just such a stunning colour. It looks, yeah, it looks almost like um, spinifex, but without the red dirt around it. That's the direction we're headed up into those mountains. Five and a half kilometres into the trek, we've been going for an hour and 45 minutes, and up until now it's been a fairly gently undulating track, quite stony, but not too hard at all. But that's all changed. <laughs> We're uh, starting the first of the two ascents that we do now. This one up to a bit of a spur and then along the spur and then the final climb. I'll uh, put a caption in exactly what the, the um, altitude gain is for the walk. So how high we climb from the start to the finish. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Radio. Keep pushing up. Here's a mountain cottage. So if you're doing overnight walks, there's um, two of these I think on this circuit that you can stay in overnight. So there it is, the Twilight Tarn Cottage. What a cracker. Let's have a look inside. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know how to find a little place to sleep. Yeah. It's really wow. incredible. I think they might have a little bit of a uh, tree root problem. The old hiking boots and everything. How cool it's is like this? Like a rat's nest in the first aid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I'd say it's a rat's nest. I don't think you'd want to be opening too many of these boxes. Squeeing on top of the twilight, no? old snow skis. Yeah, they're skiing pictures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some ice skates. Gee, it must get cold enough here you can skate on the lake. Yeah, well, look. This oh, hut wow. was constructed in 1927 by the original park ranger and, and a small group. I don't group. think anything's been done to it since. <laughs> no, did you? and a small group of enthusiastic people who formed the first ski club of Tasmania. Well, there you go. That's pretty cool. A little bit creepy, but pretty cool. We're almost up at the top of the mountain. We've come across this beautiful little creek bed. But it is getting a little chilly up here. Slowly working our way to the top. We're uh, eight kilometres into it now. We're above the tree line. You know what kills off all those trees, whether it's just the cold weather or fire. It doesn't look like fire though. Okay, keep going. Beautiful tranquil lake. It's the first one we've seen life in. There's um, lots of little shrimps in this one. shrimps there's platypus so we just met an old fella who came bounding up over the top of the cliffs 
who reckons he's been going about an hour and a half. So we've got about that length of time in front of us. <sighs> we've been going five hours. So it's gonna be six and a half hours by the time we get back. It's just rocky. Yeah, it's a, just a constant rock hop, rock scramble the entire way. It's, I'd say 5% of it is on pathways, nice flat pathways, and 95% is clambering over the rocks. Still, it's, it's not being, hard, no, it's just demanding. Hurts your feet. Yeah. Okay, okay. well, the What's last you? couple of times that I mentioned we were as high as we're going to get, I was wrong. Both times. <laughs> Both times. <laughs> We are very high. Look at that, that is just spectacular. And it looks like we might have a pathway all the way back to the car park with a bit of luck. <laughs> Which will be sensational if it is. So we've done 12.7 kilometers. We've been going five and a half hours. We're knackered. <laughs> and we're looking forward to the last stretch home. After 13 kilometres of rocks, we're finally on to this beautiful path leading us back towards the car park. Hopefully. It's coming through the snow gums. I don't know if they're really snow gums or not, but they're simply beautiful trees. Yep. Oh. Look at that. Gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful, I beautiful. We were almost down. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> Can't be far to go now. Do you want me to have a look? No. I'm better off not knowing. As long as we're on the right track. We're on the right track. So they say in um, all trails and wiki, I think, to do this circuit anti-clockwise, which is what we did. But at this point of the day, we're convinced that the best way to do it would be clockwise. So you get all of this really hard climbing and scrambling out of the way when you're fresh. And then the second part of the trail is much simpler, way less complex than this. So uh, you'd be doing that with tired legs. So it, to me, if I was doing it, do it clockwise from the car park go clockwise not anti-clockwise i don't think that's and the other thing is the view is much better going clockwise because you're looking down at the lakes um, as you're coming down the hill whereas um when you go anti-clockwise they're behind you so you don't actually get to see them just my opinion anyway put this away so we can clamber down some more of these rocks well we made it six and a half hours 15.2 kilometers and the last third of it was quite grueling <laughs> probably because we were knackered now it's a lot of uh, a lot of rock clambering just small rocks but um the, the path is just not even at all there's about five percent of the uh, entire trek is boardwalk the rest of it is just a rocky bouldery pathway but do you love the boardwalk oh, the boardwalk is beautiful but it is a stunning walk, yeah. especially that last half of it is just beautiful. Once you sort of climb up above the tree line, it's just gorgeous. It'll be interesting to see what the altitude um, gain was for the walk because it's a significant climb. We are absolutely knackered. Just one foot's knackered. The other foot's fine. So um, we'll head back down the hill now and boil the kettle and have a cup of boy oh boy i'm looking forward to that so it's about what was it nine kilometers i think or something no maybe even more than that to get up here um, oh from the camp 16 kilometers 16 kilometers yeah yeah 14 14 kilometers to get up here from the campsite rightio we'll head back down the hill back into the warm weather but that was a great walk it was fantastic beautiful walk rightio this morning's hike is the mountfield east hike Four to five hours return see how we go with that we might do a bit of a shortcut just double back the same track instead of doing the full loop around see how we feel when we get to the top this is lake fenton this is the drinking water supply for the campsite so no pistling in the lake here okay <laughs> otherwise we'll be drinking it tomorrow 
Rightio, here we go. Apparently the first half is up the hill through the eucalypt forest and across a couple of stones. This is the famous Fagus. That apparently Mount Field and Cradle Mountains are renowned for. Because apparently they colour up beautifully yellow to red golden colours. But um, these are interesting, they look like tiny little crinkle cut chips. But this one's not so pretty. Oh, there's a few of them around here. But we're about two weeks early apparently for the Fagus. There's another another few over here. Two weeks early for the for the colouring. So we might have to come back. See how we go. Here she comes. Sneaking between the gum trees. So what are we done? Point eight. Hard to believe 10 degrees is hot. Yeah, that's it. We're sweating at 10 degrees. Some low cloud over the top of the mountains. Look at that. Alright, we'll push up. So the track's just a, um, sorry? Tree. I didn't even notice the tree. <laughs> See the tree? <laughs> um, what was I saying? The track, yeah, so the track, this is what it's probably like. It's certainly the um, tarn shelf track we did, there was an awful lot of this sort of rock hopping. And it's not difficult, you just got to watch your footing and don't film while you're walking. Just a... Uh, it was a big tiger snake just sunning himself on this rock here so um, he's probably gone in underneath the rock just need to be a little bit careful make a bit of a noise see if these rocks out all the different colored lichen I was just saying it looks like there's been a paintball competition up here somewhere with all the splatters of different colors everywhere so what are we under one and a half k from the car park it's been a pretty constant climb since the start of the track oh very high yeah lovely view the sun's out it's amazing the difference it makes when the sun's shining when it's overcast it's freezing as soon as the sun comes out it's really quite warm relatively speaking still only I think today was, what was it when we got out of the car? Nine degrees or something? Nine degrees. So it's still not a stifling summer barbecue weather, but it is beautiful with the sun out. Very different, right? Sorry? Very different up here. Yeah, Alpine Heath, I think they call this, as opposed to the Alpine grasslands that we went through on the Tarn Shelf. That's right, Tarn Shelf circuit it's really quite lovely especially when there's a boardwalk to walk on that makes it really quite lovely how cute are these flowers so this is the windy moor they call it stretching out in front of us and that's uh, Mount Field East in the distance there that's where we're headed and I was just reading here that um, because of the terrain and people trekking through it trying to keep it out of the mud that um, it became quite damaged so now they've put in this platform that runs for 900 meters across the moor quite an effort and we love them for it hang on a minute it's run out that was the shortest 900 meters i've ever done must have run out of timber this leaf's winding away along the platform here across the windy moors. You can see they are very boggy, there's just water everywhere here. It would be an absolute quagmire if you had to walk through the mud. Well done, friends of Mount Field. In general, the paths and things are quite good. <laughs> Although, I must admit, there were sections of it a couple of days ago on the uh, Tarn shelf circuit where we had no idea where the path was but we found our way but in general the paths are great really good we're out of the moors off the walkway and getting back into the snow gum country again 
they obviously don't like soggy feet and then looking up there it's quite a climb to the top of Mount Field made it to the intersection of two tracks so we just got to get up the hill and it looks like there might be a rock or two to get over on the way up that hill 500 meters roughly 20 minutes one way, 20 minutes one way. Okay, we'll see how good they are. Just see the rock? Just past there. There's a, um, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Just have to go up. See, there's a can, there's a rock can just up there, and then a marker looks like on a, on a stick. So it must be that. Yeah, as you get up there, there'll be hundreds of them. <laughs> Not far to go. Just up there somewhere. And okay, there it is, top of the mountain. So that's um, 3.8k from the car park. It's taken us just under two hours. It's fun. Two hours and 52 minutes. It's a fun walk. It was a great walk. So far, I've got to get down yet. Wow, the view is pretty specky as well. Let's see if we can get around the corner here a bit. There we go. Oh. Right, there we go. Ooh, Put one on top. Build it up just that little bit higher. Oh, well, that's not higher, that's just <laughs> down low. Well, you can need to fill this bit. And so I can get in it, shelter from the wind when it's blowing a gale. Right, so there you go. That is the view. How stunning is that? Right up here, <coughs> level with the bottom of the cloud line. Big bushfire over there in the distance. That is just beautiful. There we go. Top of the world. Yahoo. So we're going to walk back to the other lookout and have our picnic at the other lookout. Have our lunch back there. It's about an hour back to get to the other lookout. It's not a breath of wind, it's so mm. still. It's incredible. We've been so lucky since we've been here. It's been cold and a little bit cloudy, but we haven't had shower. We had a tiny little bit of rain, just a shower, and then um, and no wind. After it's just Devonport, been, of course. yeah, after Devonport. Derwent Bridge? Oh, Devonport, yeah, Devonport, far out. But, um, yeah, we've been really lucky. We've got a bit of rainy stuff coming in the next few days, so I think tomorrow's not too bad. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is Easter, of course, the weather goes to crap, and uh, so we're just going to go and sit that out. And uh, then we're going to push right down to the bottom of the island, right down as far south as we can go. And uh, we've got some really lovely weather coming, and we'll just slowly work our way back north again. That's the plan. Mm -mm. It's a fairly fluid plan, but that's the plan today. Okay, I suppose we should start and meander back down the hill. Or well, scramble. Scramble. Scramble down the hill. It's a lot of rocks. Look at all those rocks. Lunch stop. On the rocks looking over Lake Fenton. You will see it in the background down there. So um, we've been going three and a half hours and covered six and a half kilometres or 6.3 kilometres. And, yeah, and most of it's just clambering over this stuff. I don't think I'll care if I don't see another rock for another year or so. We're actually saying we're looking forward to um, seeing the beach. We haven't seen the coast for a long time. Really looking forward to that. Anyway, we'll just have lunch up here on the hill and then uh, it's probably about another half an hour or 40 minutes to get down to the car park. Pretty slow going over these rocks. Going up is not too bad, coming down, you've just got to watch your steps so much. We have one in two. Lisa's already had an accident, fell in a hole. So it looks like I'll be caring for her tonight, <laughs> which I normally do anyway, so it's got to be nothing different. 
All right, what a beautiful day. It is in the sun, it is so warm. It is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But when I say so warm, it's probably 12 degrees. <laughs> but the sunshine just oh, makes it feel so glorious. much better. And beautiful, clear skies. There's a big fire right over in the background over there. You might be able to see the smoke. And there's another one over towards the, um, the other side, towards the east as well. But I'd say it's burning off. There's a, um, quite a lot of pine plantations around here and I think they burn off all the, um, all the branches and stuff that they knock off them when they cut the trees down. Okay, I'll just keep going with lunch and we'll work our way back down to the bottom. Well, we made it. The end of the walk back at the car. Seven and a half kilometres, four hours and five minutes. 90% rock climbing. 90% clambering over the rocks. Still, it was a beautiful was walk. Fun. Absolutely beautiful walk. You just get a bit nervous, that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> After a little fall, you get a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of rocks. But 100% worth doing, for yeah. sure. That was just beautiful. All right, cannot wait to get home and have a cuppa. Rightio, we'll wrap it up there. That should just about do it for this episode. Coming up in the next episode, we go down to a place called Jeevston and we do the Tahoon treetop walks, which was really good. And then we also do a hike up Mount Hearts and that was wonderful. It was freezing cold. There was zero visibility. The cloud was really low. There was snow on the ground, but we absolutely loved it. Our most favorite climb so far here in Tasmania. Really good, so you'll enjoy that. And then from Jeevston, we go down to Cockle Creek and we do a hike out to the most southerly accessible point on Tasmania, or in Tasmania, on Tasmania, whatever it is, um, and therefore in Australia. And then from Cockle Creek, we come back up to Bruny Island and we really enjoyed our stay at Bruny Island. A couple of great hikes there at Bruny as well. So thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed episode four and I hope to see you again in episode five. Thanks, mate.